Welcome back, or if you're new here, welcome to the Media Literacy Guidebook. Today's video will explore the concepts of semiotics and codes. This starts our deep dive into deconstructing media messages. We're going to get a little in the weeds here, but I'm confident you can keep up. Let's get started. So what is semiotics? Semiotics, boiled down, is the study of signs. What's a sign? Well, a sign is anything that has meaning for the person viewing it. That's a little vague, so let's break this down further. So signs can be a particular shape, color, again, anything that has meaning. All of these elements and others have meaning for people in one way or another. In other words, you could call these graphical elements. In turn, semiotics is concerned with what these graphical elements represent and how they're grouped in the mind. Signs can be generally broken down into three different types. First, iconic signs. These signs closely resemble whatever the thing is it's representing. This could be a simple drawing on a restroom door, it could be the Apple logo, and other similar messages. Next, indexical signs. Rather than closely resembling something, these signs have a logical common sense connection to what they represent. So a couple of examples here. First, imagine you're walking outside and you see footprints in the snow. Logically, you can assume that something, probably a human being, recently walked by. That would be an indexical sign. Or you can look up from your window and you see thick smoke in the distance, indicating fire. In this case, the smoke would be the indexical sign. Finally, symbolic signs. In my experience, this is the sign that tends to trip people up the most until they're given some concrete examples. So symbolic signs are the most abstract of these three categories. There's no clear logical connection between them and what they represent. So consider some of these examples. Words in general, numbers, flags from countries, certain corporate logos. You have to be told what these are. You have to be given context in order to understand the representation between these signs and their meaning. Otherwise, they're just random shapes. So that's sort of the gist of signs, but what do we do with them? Well, you could just use them on their own, such as with a logo, but often enough you'll see these signs combined with other signs, and these are called codes. These codes, in turn, can provide a lot of information if you're paying close enough attention, and we see them everywhere in society. Let's look at some now. First, we have metonymic codes. These are collections of signs that make a viewer reach certain assumptions. So, for example, expensive paintings on a wall usually indicates wealth. Consider this picture of a room. What do you assume about the people who live here, and why did you make that assumption? What signs in this room led you to believe that these people are wealthy. Condensed codes. These are similar to metonymic codes, but they're only discernible to cultural insiders. In other words, for those outside of the culture, the message could be confusing or insensible. Analogical codes cause a viewer to make mental comparisons between signs. So, for example, consider why you'll often see commercials from mints paired with snow. A double pleasure's waiting for you. A double pleasure for double mint gum. A double great feeling, making you realize double is the one for you. Double fresh, double smooth, double delicious to chew. A double pleasure is waiting for you. Double mint gum. A double pleasure is waiting for you. Double mint gum. Well, snow is cold, refreshing, has a bit of a cold snap, covers the ground, and if you look a little deeply into it, almost sort of resets the world. What does mint do? Well, mint can refresh or cover up bad breath, and it tends to have a bit of a bite or snap to it. Mint cools down flavors and is often used to reset someone's palate. So do you see why snow and mints work well together? It's the combination or the comparisons between these two, and that's why you'll often see them, for example, in commercials for gum. There's also displace codes, and these transfer meaning from one set of signs to another. For example... Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, morning. Good morning. When discussing semiotics and codes, you also want to keep in mind the idea of cognitive activity and how that can influence the messages being seen. In other words, a viewer can actively arrive at a conclusion regarding the meaning of these signs and codes through a mental state that can be influenced by a variety of factors. Some of these factors might include What a certain fa 
famous old man says, you might not have noticed, but your brain did. It's shorthand for recognizing that your brain can pick up on signs, codes, and interpretations quickly, often without you consciously recognizing that's what's happening. When you combine all of the things that we discussed today, we ultimately end up with a common learned meaning or understanding of signs. That is to say, we share a culture. So there's two videos for today's recommended media. The first is a short video breaking down Ferdinand de Saussure's concepts of signifier versus signified. It's a really cute video and cuts right down to the core of signs in a very easy to understand way. Next is Martha Rosler's Semiotics of the Kitchen, a performance art piece. Link in the down there part for both of these. While watching this one, try to connect some of the vocabulary and terms we discussed to what Martha is trying to say with the piece. Don't forget that if you have any questions for me or suggestions on what you'd like me to talk about next, comment down below or email me at professorgoggles at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again real soon. Take care.